I find myself concerned about China. I find myself concerned about their way that they treat their their uh, citizen citizenry with the with the social rating system, with the facial recognition. You know, they say that the, uh, the Chinese citizens now have social scores. Uh, you can lose points by participating in um, activism or protests. And what can happen when you get a low social score? You can not leave the country. You cannot use uh, public transportation, stuff like this. And so the way that they are finding to control their citizenry is some very frightening things for the future of, of, of civilization, as I see it, a threat to that. I also wonder about um, if the United States should be more active in supporting Hong Kong protesters. That seems to me a great opportunity for for America to prop up an, an ally and a democratic uh, society over there in, in that part of in China. And so I wonder uh, if you were to become president, what would be your approach to these issues in China? And what are your thoughts on that? The most reprehensible thing going on in China right now is the concentration camps for the, right. uh, the Uyghur uh, ethnic minority. Mm. It is awful. I don't know if you've seen some of the stuff. I have. I should have brought that up. Yeah, as no, well. it's freaking like straight out of the Stone Ages type stuff. It's beyond. It's uh, well, well, they round up a bunch of um, they're Muslims, right? Yes, and they're uh, doing cultural uh, re-education because they want a homogenous society. And religion is is frowned upon in a communist society. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong anywhere. Yeah, it's even darker than that. In some cases, they send the the Uyghur men to like a work camp or a concentration camp, and then they send uh, soldiers to to hang out with their wives in their absence. I mean, like really, really oh. dark shit hmm. that you see, and you're like, this is. Uh, Inhuman, in, a, in an effort to to what resettle the family, or or what? Some yeah, just to to try and essentially uh, excise their country of this minority. They want to work the men to death and remarry the women. Is that the idea? Yeah, they or they want them to to essentially break up the family unit so that the next generation uh, is not brought up in the same religion in the same right. way. Right. Uh, so, but everything else you named also that they're. Hong Kong is tricky because Hong Kong was a British colony for mm-hmm. a long time. And then the Brits handed it back to China. And then now it's in this handover period where it's co- considered a semi autonomous zone. Mm. But if you look up and say, okay, what country is Hong Kong part of? You would have to conclude China because it was a British colony that it was returned to the Chinese uh, a number of years ago. And so. The question is, how can we support the people in Hong Kong to keep the abuses from scaling up there? And in some ways, the Chinese haven't done what you would fear, which is go in and do a a military oppression Tiananmen style. Uh, But there's plenty of dark stuff happening happening in Hong Kong. And I said last night, they banned face masks there so they could use uh, facial recognition technology to identify protesters and then Mm -hmm. round them up afterwards. the biggest thing we can do to bring pressure on the Chinese is to make it it clear to them that if they abuse human rights, there are going to be consequences. And those consequences have to be economic, really, because that's the main language the Chinese understand. Uh, they have two primary overriding priorities at all times. Number one, maintain robust economic growth. And the number two, preserve social order. <laughs> so the question is... Uh, can you make number one powerful enough so that they cur- curb the abuses in number two? The social credit system is part of uh, is part of that setup. Um, and uh, do you all see, watch Black Mirror? Do you see those mm-hmm. episodes? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it reminds you of that Black Mirror episode. Definitely. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and to to me, that is hand in hand with their total lack of privacy regs. The fact that any interaction you have in any context gets recorded. Uh, They have a real powerful surveillance state there, and they're ramping up their technology to make it unprecedented in human history. Right. 
So to me, here's the approach. Number one, you say, look, you benefit from our trade relationship, from your global commerce. If you go past a certain point in terms of your human rights abuses, you're going to pay a real price. Mm. Number two, on the technology side, they're actually trying very hard to build up a parallel tech ecosystem, mm. which is really disastrous potentially for everyone over time. Mm -hmm. They used Google Apps until very recently, uh, and now they've transitioned to their own homegrown operating system. What does that mean, mm. that the government outlaws, prohibits uh, Google-based devices? Well, they're not using them now, and it's an open question whether the Chinese government prohibited them or the U.S. government said, hey, Google, you're not allowed to work with the Chinese on these things. Mm. Um, but a lot of the Google apps we all know are essentially open source, where, uh, or if not open source, they make the license freely available. Mm -hmm. So if you were the Chinese and you had to come up with your own set of apps and operating system, uh, it would really suck, especially because Google had it all figured out for you. So they were using Google uh, and now they develop their own homegrown operating system and apps that they're exporting to other countries that they're trying. So the risk is that um, if for whatever reason consumers start using that and we become, for whatever reason, reliant, are you worried about data privacy breaches? Yes. Yeah. So you can imagine a world where, because uh, we know that Chinese technology firms and the Chinese government have a very close relationship. <laughs> and so right. if you succeed in exporting that technology platform to the rest of the world, then you essentially have the Chinese government's eyes mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. hooks into everything. Mm -hmm. So that's what you have to try and prevent. Uh, and the way to prevent it is to set up a world data organization that's analogous to the World Trade Organization and say, here are the standards and protocols for data and technology. <laughs> Get the EU and Japan to buy in. And then make it so that if you're an unaffiliated country, that it's obvious that you have to go with the world tech standards and not the Chinese tech standard. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then if you're China and you look up and say, wait a minute, uh, I can't export my stuff effectively mm. because it doesn't follow these protocols. Our stuff doesn't work with anyone else's stuff. At the extreme end, they would say, maybe it's better for us if we join the world on this one because mm -hmm. then at least our stuff will be interoperable. And also, right now, I'm going to bet their software is terrible <laughs> compared to, compared to uh, Google's and everyone else's. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, if you're a third world country, and they're generally developing countries, and China comes and says, hey, use our tech, you're like, I do not want to use your tech at all. Your tech is terrible. Unless it's free, you know. Oh, but, you know, ours is virtually free, too. But, but like, if you're the Congo, and... China's like, hey, we're like building all of your stuff. We're building you a coal power plant. Use this software. <laughs> <laughs> then, then Congo's like, I guess we have to. Right. Um, right. So, so that's the game they're playing. Mm. And we have to make it so that that game loses. Mm. Uh, that game losing actually is the best way we can protect human rights. Uh, because then if you're China and you look up and say, well, I need to join this uh, world organization, then you say, well, if you want to join this world or organization, you need to have some kind of uh, privacy rules in check. You need to not be abusing your own people in these ways. Mm. Is there any efforts to put an organization like that together? Yeah, I'm happy to say that uh, we're starting to take some steps. Like We have some proposals out. Certainly, if I'm president, uh, we can get this done relatively quickly because mm. the EU and Japan would love I, nothing yeah, more. Right. Uh, and this is the brainchild of a guy named Ian Bremmer, who's this uh, brilliant thinker on global security matters. And so Ian's running with this ball uh, right now. Mm. That's great.